Hey guys, MCU Collector with another figure review. Excuse my voice, I'm kind of losing it. I have a little bit of a sore throat. <clears throat> so I'm going to try and, and, and make this as audible as possible for you guys. But anyway, I do have a new figure review. I know it's been really slow this month, but I have a new Marvel Legends figure in, and I'm excited to share it with you. It's not the most popular, the most exciting figure necessarily, but it's a new figure. It's a different take on a character that seems to be extremely popular this year. Um, this makes the third figure for Kitty Pride, Shadow Cat, Captain Kate Pride, Catherine Ann Pride, however you want to call her. Um, this would make number three in terms of figures. It's actually my second for the year because I have the Shadow Cat from the uh, AOA wave. And then she's coming in the Excalibur three pack, which I do not have yet. And I'm trying to think of which one Hasbro Pulse is going to be shipping out soon. It's going to be either the Excalibur set or the X4 set and I honestly at this point I don't remember which one what it was that was planned to ship out uh, December 1st so that makes three figures this year alone for Kitty Pride. now that's not a lot when we look at like Spider-Man, Iron Man, Wolverine, Captain America standards uh, but three figures for one character that's not necessarily one of the mainstream characters um, I think that's kind of a big deal you know it's so three three figures for Kitty Pride, that's pretty cool. This one in particular is the Captain Kate Pride version from the Marauders number one in 2019 comic run. This is a Marvel, uh, a Marvel Unlimited Annual Plus subscription box exclusive. So it's the Marvel Unlimited, so the digital comics online. Um, when you get the annual plus subscription kit, it is a hundred dollars for per year. You get a kit, it comes with the figure, a patch, pin, some, and and a couple of comic books. I think I just went to eBay to get it because you know I'm not going to pay the hundred dollars, even though I should just pay the hundred dollars. Is expensive. These figures sometimes run. Um, but I am excited to have it. I will show you guys the other figures that were part of the Marvel Legends um, Unlimited Annual Plus subscription exclusive um, there have been a number of them each year so I will show you guys all those compared so we'll just kind of get right to it the figure doesn't come with any kind of special packaging or anything it just comes in a little black bag like this it is essentially the same it's a kit bash version but it's essentially the same thing as the juggernaut wave kitty pride um, <clears throat> And um, and with a little couple of extra things, so a sword that came with uh, um, why why am I Nightcrawler? I'm like losing my mind right now. And then the little handkerchief mask um, that came with silk. So um, kit bash figure uh, repaint, um, not necessarily anything crazy or new, but um, it is a new version. You know, there's some key things on here like her nose is bandaged up. Which she, I, I guess her nose broke when she tried to enter a Krakoan portal, but she was not able to travel through the portal because she's not, I guess, a mutant. She is a Neo, which is like a higher form of mutant, I guess. As I struggle to remove the tape that was on there. So that is why she couldn't travel through, so she, tried, she does what she can to help mutants in other ways. Um, and here she is. So again, repaint. Not really a whole lot different. I got some sloppiness there already that I could see. Um, but she looks pretty good. Kind of what you would expect. There's nothing really going to be over the top with her or anything like that. Uh, but I am happy to have it. So let's take a closer look at her. Okay, so here is the Kitty Pride up close. Uh, <clears throat> what I really like is the bandage that they put on there. That looks really good. It looks like it uses like the, the digital print. Um, to kind of put like a little bit of blush on her cheeks as well as get that bandage right and then the eyes actually look like it uses that same um, digital print type of uh, paint applications that you know they typically use for like the game reverse figures and the MCU figures we don't typically see that with the comic figures uh, but here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison they are the same but it's amazing the difference that the paint apps you know do to the head sculpts as you can see, hair is a little bit lighter, actually. Um, and then the hair tie is not painted on uh, the new one. You can see it's just all brown, whereas the, old, the Juggernaut release had yellow. It's kind of sloppy looking, but it had yellow paint there. And then you can see my Juggernaut uh, wave release has like sloppy paint kind of in a couple of different areas where the black meets the yellow. Um, this one, for the most part, doesn't have all of it. And there's, you know, the handkerchief. 
um, for Silk, you know, it was an added part to, to show, you know, she was ha covering her face with a mask or when she had it down. Um, I don't really seem to have a whole lot of issues here, and this might be because of the paint, like, paint rub with the belt. You can see a little bit of that yellow coming through on that, like, blackish slate gray color. But it looks to have clean lines throughout, including on the legs. Not perfectly straight there. Not a big deal. The belt is different, though. Um, at first, I kind of thought maybe they were the same, but you can see the belts are different. The X logo is much larger here. It's done all in yellow, but it's, like, one piece, whereas this had, like, two different, you know, layers to it or whatever um, and then a black and red X logo this one just has a little bit of red paint on there and it's done nicely so that's kind of the difference and then this one she has two uh, like holding hands so she could hold the sword in both hands whereas this one and I can't remember what accessories she came with if she came with interchangeable hands or not but on this one I have the open hand and the fist um, there so the hands are different the yellows aren't a perfect match you can see this one is a little bit darker um, but it's not it's not bad but you know there's definitely some difference there um, in terms of accessories again here's that same sword that we saw with um, Nightcrawler this one's done in a gray plastic but it's not the super cheap flimsy like almost translucent gray um, it's done with a much nicer gray color that actually makes it look silver metal um, and then the hilt we get a little black paint there uh, nothing else going on to it but that does look pretty good and then we get a Lockheed um, here, it's the same Lockheed that we had gotten previously, uh, but the colors are different. You, this one is a little bit more um, metallic and a little bit brighter in color. This one was a little bit um, darker of a purple. Um, you can see both have, I think they're both kind of gold color eyes, so that's done the same. But there's no difference in them, just a slightly different shade of purple. And then the same with Lockheed, you know, she can, uh, Lockheed can wrap the tail right around and stay on um, Kate Pride's shoulder, Captain Kate Pride. So that is pretty cool. But man, the highlight is again the head sculpt with that bandage being on there. That looks really, really nice. I like the way that came out looking. It's just paint on there. You know, I wouldn't have expected a brand new sculpt. You know, with these un Marvel Unlimited exclusive figures, um, they're all repaints every single time except for... Um, one of them, which was, um, I think it was the first one, first year or the second year, it was the rescue figure, which you'll see here shortly, but yeah, that looks really nice. Okay, so we'll go over Kate Pride's articulation. So the head is on a ball, uh, ball joint hinge, so she can look up that much, she can look down, uh, that much. It does sit pretty darn high on that peg, as you could kind of see the side, the gap there between the ball peg and the neck, um, you know, it was like that even on the original release, so it's not anything that they've changed. Uh, you get full rotation, of course, with the ponytail not getting in the way, really hindering articulation too much. Uh, so that is good. You get some tilt and pivot there. Her arms can go out straight, essentially. There's a go upward a little bit, not a whole lot. You can't get a full rotation, you just have to kind of work around the shoulder pads there. Uh, single jointed elbow with a swivel um, at the elbow, so you're only going to get. A little bit less than 90 degrees actually on that elbow wrists swivel and they do hinge we have a diaphragm joint so she could pivot to her left that much she could pivot to her right that much it's actually good side to side pivot compared to a lot of other female figures going back actually quite a bit back more than other female figures but going forward is still very limited we see that with all female figures with the diaphragm joint and then she has a swivel at that diaphragm joint there is no waist swivel to, on the female figure legs only go out um that far apart so that's not a whole lot she can kick forward very high though as you can see there uh, it doesn't really go back a whole lot. You have an upper thigh cut in there. Double jointed knee like so. So good bend at the knee. No calf swivel or anything like that. Foot hinges down. You get a little bit of hinge up. Ankle pivot. Peck holes at the bottom of the feet. So if you have the previous Kitty Pride uh, figure, you know exactly what you're getting into with this one. Because it's essentially the same exact thing. But you can see the colors are different. The yellow is a little bit darker. And then the black of the suit is actually black, whereas this one has more of a very dark uh, slate gray is kind of the best way I think I can describe it. You can see you know, how much darker this one is compared uh, to this one. So yep, Kitty Pride. 
Okay, and here are our three Kitty Pride figures. So we have the Shadow Cat from the AOA Wave 2 Colossus Build-A-Figure. We have the new Marvel uh, Unlimited Annual Subscription Plus Kit Exclusive. And then the Juggernaut Wave. And then we still have the Shadow Cat that's going to be coming in the Excalibur 3-pack. That is exclusive to Shop Disney and Hasbro Pulse. That one has not yet released. Or some people do have their hands on it. Um, I think overseas it was released. And then... Um, some folks were able to to get it somehow. I'm not sure exactly how, uh, but some folks do have it. So it's going to be three Kitty Pride figures um, just this year alone. So we had the one from a few years ago. I don't even remember what year that was. Now was that 2016 maybe Juggernaut Wave, uh, 2015 perhaps. So it was a long time ago for that one. So two in one year, and then the third one coming for uh, Shadow Cat Kitty Pride. Um, so it's a big year for her. The storyline for the Marauders. Um, looked pretty interesting. I read up into it. I didn't know about it. I wasn't aware. Uh, but it sounds very interesting. You know, Kitty Pride is a natural leader. She's led the X-Men. She's led Guardians of the Galaxy, replacing Star-Lord for a time after... I know, I think she was in a relationship with Peter Quill, and I'm not sure exactly what happened with that. But she actually went by the Star-Lord name, I believe, um, before coming back to Earth, whatever may have happened. But uh, pretty interesting. Um, I think the figure is really good. I know a lot of people missed out on Kitty Pride or weren't collecting at the time and wanted a Kitty Pride figure. This is an option to do, although a very pricey option. Um, but this one I know still goes up there in price, so it's kind of crazy. You know, maybe in 2022 they release another Kitty Pride because she seems to be all over the place and really popular right now. But we shall see. But anyway, let's take a look at all the other Marvel Legends, Marvel Unlimited Annual Subscription Plus uh, exclusives. Okay, so here is the entire lineup. So Kitty Pride um, is the latest figure to release. Last year was the Ms. Marvel and Spider-Man cosplay. The year prior to that was the Venomized Punisher. The year prior to that was oh, the Tony Stark. The year prior to that was the Captain Marvel. The year prior to that, I think, was the Gold Ultron. Prior to that was Rocket Raccoon. And then the first one was Rescue, although I think Rocket Raccoon may have been the first one, and then Rescue was the second one, and then Gold Ultron. Um, those three kind of really throw me off, but these are the, all the ones that I have released so far, unless I'm just drawing a blank on another one that has been released. I think the most popular out of all of these has definitely been the Rescue Pepper Potts figure, because that was originally teased at a San Diego Comic-Con at one time, and I think was supposed to come out in that Iron Man 3 wave, but for whatever reason it was scrapped and didn't release. They even had a Pepper Potts head sculpt to go with it that never actually got released or made. So the figure came just like that. No accessories, which these figures don't typically come with accessories. Rocket Raccoon did come with his weapon there. Captain Marvel did come with the unmasked head sculpt. Venomized Punisher came with two guns. Gold Ultron came with a gold color stand. Tony Stark did not come with anything. Ms. Marvel came with her enlarged arms. And then Kitty Pride comes with the sword and Lockheed. So they are light on accessories, either nothing or very minimal. Um, these figures are always repaints, with the exception, again, of that rescue figure. Who knows if that thing will ever get a mass-wide release. Um, would be cool, but it's kind of nice. It is definitely special. It's a true exclusive that hasn't gotten any kind of release. Uh, Tony Stark remains to be the only MCU figure that has released in that form, although you can make the argument that this is just Robert Downey Jr. cosplaying as Tony Stark because this is the actual outfit that Robert Downey Jr. wore at a San Diego Comic-Con. Um, and not something that he actually wore in the movie, so that one could kind of be one of those ones where you could do whatever you want with it. Uh, but at the time, that was the only Tony Stark uh, figure that was released. This was before the the Marvel Studios, the first 10 years um, Walmart exclusive 2-pack with the Iron Man Mark 1. So at, at one time, that was again, that was the only Tony Stark figure. Now we have one in the blue suit or whatever, and it's the, essentially the same exact thing. Uh, but it's interesting. But these are all the ones. You guys let me know down in the comments below. What do you guys think of all these figures? Are you glad that they're just kind of basic repaints? Nothing that you absolutely have to get or anything like that. I think for a lot of folks that is kind of a highlight. Um, because, you know, you don't want to have to... You don't want to feel like you need to get a certain figure, a certain character, if it's not going to get, you know, released um, in that way. Again, Rescue is the exception to this. Every other year it has been a different... Um, a different figure that's repaint that is not necessarily something I think that most people like have to have or anything like that And I think Hasbro knows that they're not gonna want to release a figure in that way now Where everyone's like well, why can't we get that should be a, a regular release? It shouldn't be an exclusive 
Uh, but it's one of those things, it's a special program to reward those folks that are getting the Marvel Unlimited service. You know, for me, I, I, I'm not going to have the time to read all the digital comics anyway. You know, I like reading them, the, the actual books and not, you know, all, digitally anyway. So for me, it's not it's not a good option, but I know a lot of folks do it. Um, but if you are one of those subscribers, let me know down in the comments below what you think of it. Let me know what you think of all these different figures and the program in general. Okay, and that is my review of the Captain Kate Pride uh, Marvel Unlimited exclusive figure. You guys let me know down in the comments below what do you think of this figure. If you read the Marauders um, comic storyline, you guys let me know down in the comments below what you think, what you thought of that comic run and what you think of this figure. Yes, it's a repaint, different belt. Um, yes, it's the same Lockheed. Yes, it's a, essentially just a kit bash. Nothing really new going on here. Um, but it's pretty accurate to the comic um, and does look really good. I think the paint apps on the face are stellar um, and really came out looking good. That bandage, they just did a really good job with that bandage on there. Um, so I'm really liking it. I'm happy with it. You guys let me know down in the comments below your thoughts as she doesn't fall down. Um, let me know down in the comments below. If you guys like this video, please do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, thank you for watching.